Bohr's model of the hydrogen atom. Bohr applied Planck's ideas of quantized energy levels to Rutherford's orbiting electrons to come up with a semi-classical structural model. So we still have the electrons orbiting the nucleus in uniform circular motion. Bohr has a set of three postulates. The first postulate says the electrons exist in stable stationary orbits and do not emit radiation while in an orbit even though it is accelerating. So by this assumption, this collapse of the electron scenario is uh, disregarded. Number two, the atom emits radiation when an electron makes a transition from a more energetic initial stationary state to a lower energy stationary state. So from the in initial energy level EI to final energy level E final, it emits a photon HF, which is equal to the difference between the energies of these levels. So similarly, an atom will absorb a photon if its energy matches the difference between two energy levels. And number three, the allowed orbits are those for which the electron's orbital angular momentum is quantized. So orbital angular momentum, MVR, is NH bar. So we have a quantum number N here, which is 1, 2, 3, and a positive integer. And H bar is reduced Planck's constant. V is the electron speed in the orbital, and R is the orbital radius. Now, if we apply these postulates to the hydrogen atom, we have a proton in the nucleus of charge plus E, an electron with charge minus E orbiting around the nucleus in uniform circular motion. It has a, it feels a centripetal force F due to the Coulomb attraction between these two charges. And therefore, it's going to have a potential energy U is equal to minus Coulomb's constant K q1 q2 divided by the distance between them r the total energy is kinetic energy plus potential energy which is one half mass of the electron its speed squared v squared and then we have the potential energy minus k e squared divided by r and in uniform circular motion uniform uh, circular motion we have the centripetal force k q squared over r squared so that's going to be k plus e minus e uh, divided by r squared magnitude is k e squared over r squared that's equal to mv squared over r mass of the electron its speed squared divided by r this is basically the coulomb force of attraction between the the two charges so we see that one of the r's cancel here and therefore we obtain v square equals k e square coulomb's constant k e square divided by mass of the electron times r squared. So uh, the kinetic energy then becomes 1 over 2 mass of the electron, its speed squared. And for the speed squared, I substitute the result I found using the centripetal force, which is Ke squared. Uh, so it's going to be Ke squared divided by mass of the electron r and this is not r squared it's r because we had one of the r's cancelling so these masses disappear and i find that the kinetic energy is ke squared divided by 2r so the total energy of this electron total mechanical energy will be its kinetic energy ke squared divided by 2r plus the potential energy minus ke squared divided by r so we find the total energy of this electron to be minus ke squared divided by 2r all right and now we're going to use the quantization of angular momentum the allowed orbit radii will be given by 
the quantization of the angular momentum, mass of the electron, speed of the electron times the radius of the orbit must be quantized in units of h bar and h bar. So this tells us that the speed of the electron should be an h bar divided by the mass of the electron times the orbit which is specified by specifying the quantum number n. So this tells me that v squared can be written as n squared h bar squared mass of the electron squared the radius squared. Uh, now this is going to be equal to ke squared over mass of the electron times its radius as we have found here and so we have the cancellation of one of the masses and one of the uh, orbit radii to find that the radii of these orbits are given by r sub n equals n square h bar square divided by mass of the electron Coulomb's constant e squared where n is 1, 2, 3, etc. It's a quantum number. So we found the orbital radii. What is the smallest possible radius? The smallest possible radius is called the Bohr radius a naught and a naught is basically for n equals 1 it is h bar squared the smallest possible value of n is substituted mass of the electron coulomb's constant e squared which is 0 0.0529 nanometers of the order of 0 0.5 angstroms so that is the radius of the smallest possible orbit which we obtain for n is equal to 1. That is the Bohr radius. And therefore A0 describes the radius of the hydrogen atom in the ground state. So ground state is the lowest possible energy state and is equal to 1. The corresponding energy levels E sub n are equal to minus Ke square divided by 2, the radius of the orbit, which is minus Ke squared divided by 2. And for the radius, I substitute the result we have obtained. Uh, since I have the 1 over the radius here, mass of the electron Ke squared divided by n squared h bar squared at the bottom. So this gives me in terms of the Bohr radius because uh, h bar squared over mke squared is a0. It gives me minus ke squared over 2 n squared a0 or a0. And this tells me that these Orbit, these energy levels are given by minus Ke squared divided by 2 A naught 1 over N squared where N is 1, 2, 3, etc. And if you find the numerical value of Ke squared over 2 A naught it is minus 36.606 electron volts divided by n square. These are the Bohr energy levels. Okay. And the spacing between the energy levels decreases as n square. Uh, and if the energy of an atom is raised from the ground state to an energy above 0 eb, it's going to be called ionized. So ionization energy is the energy for n equals infinity, which is 0 eb, and n equals 1, 
the ground state energy. So this difference is the ionization energy of the electron. Now, if I look at the spacing between the energy levels, delta E, and if this is equal to HF or uh, HC divided by lambda, Planck's constant times frequency or Planck's constant times speed of light divided by the wavelength, uh, this is going to be equal to Ke squared over 2A0. Now final state energy 1 over n final squared minus the initial state energy 1 over n initial squared. So this is uh, E initial minus E final uh, because we, we, we go from the initial state to the final state. Uh, the delta E is going to be equal to the energy difference, the, the energy difference positive absolute value is E initial minus E final and the speed of light C is equal to lambda times the frequency. So this gives us the following relationship 1 over lambda is equal to Ke squared divided by 2A0HC 1 over n final squared 1 over n final squared minus 1 over n initial squared and therefore we find the right Bergs constant to be Ke squared divided by 2A0HC and the transition between the energy levels gives us a wavelength of the emitted light 1 over lambda equals right Bergs constant times 1 over n final squared minus 1 over n initial squared which matches the experimental result. Okay, so the Bohr atomic model seems to work well for the hydrogen atom and this model can be extended to other elements ionized to have one electron left, for example, helium plus, lithium two plus, beryllium three plus, etc. And if Z is the atomic number, then if you have the helium atom ionized because we're not getting rid of the protons here, we would have uh, the Coulomb force being not Ke square over R square as we did here, it's going to be uh, the Coulomb force is going to be uh, Kze squared over R square where Z is the atomic number because Ze will be the charge in the uh, nucleus. So we're going to replace E square with Ze square in the Coulomb's force so that the corresponding uh, Bohr radii will be given by n squared A0 over Z and the energy levels will be given by uh, Z squared K e minus K A squared over 2A0 Z squared over n squared instead of 1 over n squared. So if you go back to your energy level statement uh, it was uh, minus Ke squared over 2Rn, now it is minus Kze squared over 2Rn. And similarly, you have an E squared in the radius, so you have to divide this by Z because E squared is replaced, replaced by Ze squared. So the, uh, the model is the same, the only difference is we have to take into account the atomic number in the Coulomb force, replace E squared with Ze squared, that results in energy levels that are scaling with Z squared and orbital radii that are scaling with 1 over Z. Now this model has some problems. First of all, the spectral lines one observes has a finite structure have a finite structure and these lines split in strong magnetic fields. So none of these effects are explained by Bohr's model. And finally, Bohr has the important correspondence principle, which says that quantum physics agrees with classical physics when the difference between the quantized le levels become vanishingly small. So if we're talking about 
um, an energy much higher than the spacing between the energy levels, then we can use classical physics. That's Bohr's correspondence principle. So to summarize, we talked about Bohr's atomic model, which um, is based on Planck's idea of quantized energy levels and uses Rutherford's uniform circular motion of electrons around the uh, <clears throat> nucleus in a semi-classical structural manner. The three postulates are electrons exist in stable, circular, uh, stationary orbits and they don't emit radiation in an orbit when they only emit radiation when there's a transition between quantized energy levels from an initial to higher energy level to a final lower energy level and the energy of the photon emitted matches the difference between these two energy levels and the orbital angular momenta are quantized in units of H bar. Applying this to the hydrogen model, we write the potential energy minus kq1 q2 over r. We write the total energy kinetic plus potential energy and using the Coulomb force as the uh, force centripetal force here, we find that v square is ke square over mr and substituting this v square into kinetic energy, we see that is k kinetic energy can be written in terms of uh, orbital radii as ke square over 2r giving us a total energy minus ke, ke square over 2r, k is Coulomb's constant. The allowed orbital radii are found for using the third postulate of Bohr, uh, quantization of angular momenta. So that gives us mvr is equal to nh bar, n square h bar square over mke square is the radius. Smallest possible radius is obtained for n equals 1, that's the Bohr radius, which is 0.5 angstroms. And the corresponding energy levels can be written by substituting for the uh, radius uh, n square h bar square over m k e square, which is n square times a zero, uh, we can find the energy levels to be minus 13.606 eV over n squared, where n is 1, 2, 3, an integer. Now, the spacing between the energy levels decreases as n, n squared. That can be seen by looking at a transition hf hc over lambda is equal to k e square over 2 a zero an f square minus k square root a zero and, and, and i square that is initial energy minus final energy because remember the energies were negative and that uh, with the observation that c is equal to lambda f for a photon speed of light is wavelength times frequency hc over lambda is equal to this and this gives us one over lambda equals Rydberg's constant times one over final state um, quantum number squared minus initial state quantum number one over initial state quantum number squared so we recover our empirical formula with the correct value of Rydberg's constant and this model can be explained to uh, other elements not just the hydrogen atom if they are ionized to have one electron left like helium plus lithium 2 plus beryllium 3 plus only by replacing e square wherever we see e square in the uh, uh, formulas that should be replaced with ZE square atomic number because we have ZE protons here instead of one proton in the nucleus. There are pr uh, uh, problems with this model, S uh, the spectral lines, fine structure and line splitting in magnetic fields, they are not explained by Bohr's model and Bohr's correspondence principle tells us that quantum physics will agree with classical physics when the difference between the energy levels, quantized levels, becomes vanishingly small.